We want to welcome our Greece campus uh, with us and those who are joining us online. Can we make a noise right now as we welcome our Greece campus? Yeah. So awesome, Greece campus online from all over the world, all the beautiful countries. We are so thankful that you are with us right now. Let me just look around. You guys look spectacular. Man, summer looks good on you. This is so beautiful. I'm so thankful that you are here uh, this morning. We're going to have a beautiful uh, day. If you're our guest, I'm at the Father's house for the very first time. As you can see, you picked a very special day. Because today is a day where we as a church come and we respond to kingdom building. We're a, we're a church that loves to see God do ongoing things. God is not writing a short story with us. He's writing, writing, not writing. He's writing a epic novel with us. And here is the beautiful part. The way we respond decides whether our names get added to this epic novel of what God is doing through ordinary people in Rochester, New York. Don't you just love that? That God has a dream for us for that. So today, I'm going to be sharing with you um, some of that vision and opportunity for us to respond to that vision and giving. But before we do, I would love to just get um, to the end of this message today. And as we as the Father's House, if we've prepared ourselves as a church family at all of our campuses and friends to a giving moment, I want to take you through your pledge card. And then we're going to put that aside. And I'm going to share with you what the Lord has placed in my heart. Can you do me a big, gigantic favor? If you can just grab your pledge card and first fruits under your seat, even if you say, I know where it is, I don't want to touch it, it's okay. If you can help me, and if it's hard to go down, ask the person next to you, just like, I'm right there, down is not easy. Help me, help me get my pledge card. Come on, Greece Campus, everybody grab their pledge cards, and I'm going to ask if we can get a camera shot on the pledge card. Now, here is the beautiful part. On the back of the pledge card is rather simple. It's asking for all your detail. Then it talks about your annual giving for those who are giving tithes and offering to the Father's house every week. I want to thank you so, so very much um, because you're not giving towards us as much as you are sustaining what God is doing through the Father's house mission and vision that God has for us. But today, it's all about our additional pledge called Heart for the House. Come on. Can you shout Heart for the House? No, I want to feel it. Come on, shout Heart for the House. Now, Heart for the House is a two-year over and above tithing pledge that can be done weekly, monthly, and annually. Now, the way that you can give is very, very easy. But I want to draw your attention to mobile giving or push pay. Mobile giving or push pay. Now, I know for a fact that it happens so often that we have people who give towards Heart for the House. Our previous one was called Love Renovation. And every week they, they bring their promised gift to see the vision being fulfilled and doing great things. And then after a while, you forget. And then the forgetting begins to uh, stack up. And after a while, it becomes so daunting that you write Jesus' IOU notes. Have you ever given God an IOU? When the ship comes in, oh, Lord, when I win that lottery, oh, Jesus, what a beautiful day. You know, if the canoe doesn't work, the ship ain't coming. Come on, that's good. You know that's good. <laughs> if you cannot be faithful with a canoe, you'll be in Mexico with a face change when the ship comes in. So I want to encourage you to consider mobile giving. It is so simple, so easy. The beautiful part is on the second step that you can set up reoccurring giving. So my family right now, our tithing and giving is on reoccurring. That means I set it up that I don't have to worry about it every week. Every week, tithing and giving goes through because that's the way we choose to live in obedience to what I understand in Scripture. And I want to encourage you to consider mobile giving. And then lastly, our first fruit is going to be part of our pledge today. What is first fruit? First fruit is my first giving towards my pledge. So my family, my wife and I, we've decided that today we're going to give 10% of our two-year pledge. So what is in here, and that's what we're going to be doing 
today. Come on, I want you to just high five the person next to you and say, you're sitting in the right place right now. You're sitting in the right place. Because I want to share with you, which I believe is very pertinent to where we are and the Lord is taking us. Heavenly Father, I pray right now that you would give us ears to hear. Father, unless you breathe courage and hope in the midst of us, Father, our lives seem so daunting. Our mountains feel so high. There is so much resistance in our heart that we, we can't even track why. But I thank you as you breathe life into your kingdom mission and assignment for our lives. I thank you that you will continue to do great things through ordinary lives, oh God. We bless you. Holy Spirit, would you come and put weightedness on every word that I speak. And I pray that you will cause ears not to hear the voice of man, but the very humming, the very echoes of heaven. Thank you that you hear this prayer right now, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. There is a beautiful scripture in the book of Habakkuk. I know some of you have never even heard of that book. So I want to say maybe it's because my accent is messing up what it should sound like. But it's somewhere in the Old Testament, if you open your Bible, somewhere in the middle, kind of half here, that it says this, the vision is yet for the appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. Though it tarries, wait for it. It shall not be overdue a single day. I love what he is saying. He's saying that we are seeing the dreams of God for our lives like a figment of reality. But wait for it. If we trust God, the very thing that feels like it's a clear, unclear reality will come to pass if it's part of God's dream for your, for your life. Now, I want to share with you some of the things that I believe that God has for us as the Father's House Church family. Now, you say, how do I know if I'm part of the Father's House Church family? Listen, so if you have been here more than three times, just deal with it. You like it. Just deal with it that this has become your home church. <laughs> if you, this is your second time, you can still sit back and say, I'm a guest. But man, you come to my house three times, you family. You know what I mean? Don't tell me, would you go get me something to eat if this is your th third visit? You have seen where the refrigerator is the other two times. It's time to be family and plant yourself and realize the Lord has you here and at our other campuses, not for pure attendance, but the Lord has you on a life mission and assignment. Can I get a yes and amen on that? So here is something that we believe the Lord has set before us as a Father's House church family. You know what I love about the Father's House church family? We don't only dream dreams and see them die. We're a kind of people that dream them and invade them and see that God makes great things happen through determination, faith, and generosity. So here is one of the first things that we see the Lord has an assignment for our lives. Come on, everybody, shout campuses. Campuses are very important because we understand through Scripture that the Bible says it is through the church that God will make known His manifest wisdom and love to the earth. The Father's house. We love local churches because we believe it's through churches that God makes His love known to the world. So we realized very quickly that there is one location in Chai Lai that was, was thriving, but some of you are driving from Menden. Some of you are driving from Webster. Some of you are driving. We, we have families that drive from Buffalo, New York to be part of this family over here. Isn't that amazing? People drive 45 minutes to be part of this family. And to you, I do a Mexican wave all by myself. I go like, why wouldn't you? Because I like this family that much too. But we sat over with a map in Rochester, New York, and we go like, yep, crazy people like you will drive 45 minutes. But people who do not know Jesus that right now is mowing their lawn with Dunkin' Donuts and disinterested in God ain't driving 45 minutes to go see whether Jesus could be a reality. We know that 15 minutes is all that they will tolerate, and we sat with a map and we put down five spots all around, five dots on the map, all around Rochester, New York, with the Chile one in place. And we began to pray and say, God, we believe 
that if we put five campuses all around the greater Rochester, that within 15 minutes driving distance of our beautiful city, people will be able to arrive at a life-giving church family like this. And the truth is, ladies and gentlemen, we've been praying and pursuing this dream for almost, what, 12, 13 years now. And Greece Campus, let me get on the camera as close as I can with you. You guys are sitting on one of those dots. This is no lie. We put the dot first, and then we found the building. And when we found the building, it was on the dot. So we are dot chasers right now. The Lord has given us a dot, and we chased it, and we found the building. Because right now in Greece campus, over a 1,000 people will be worshiping in the Greece area. Life-giving and the stories. Yeah, that's worth celebrating. We're so excited because God has grown this, God has grown that, and this is what we have seen, that there was another dot on the southern end of our city in Brighton, and I want to show you the building that the Brighton, town of Brighton has given us a thumbs up. It's the, the, the what, Winton Plaza in Brighton, and right now that big old space has opened up for us to plant and launch another Father's House Campus. So if you are in Henrietta, Brighton area, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and Happy Birthday. <laughs> Father's House is going to need you because we are coming to establish a beautiful faith community in that area. Um, there you see some of the architectural drawings that are in place and going on right now already. It is a good thing. Come on. Can you shout for me? It is a good thing. No, I want to hear a shout. It is a good thing. You say, Peer, where are the other dots? The other dots in Victor and in Webster. And we are going to chase those dots down. We are coming because we believe it's part of that vision that God has set before us. Let me tell you a second thing that the Lord is qu quickening in our hearts. There is a scripture in the book of Ze Zechariah, chapter 8, verse 4. All these obscure prophets in the Old Testament. Just on how beautiful this is. He says this. This is a message from God of the angel armies. Old men and old women will come back to Jerusalem. They will sit on benches and on the streets and spin tails. They will move around safely with their canes. It's a good city to grow Old in. Come on, can you say, say, with, say with me? Man, it's like I've got stuck in my mouth. Say it's a good city to grow old in. He says, but, and boys and girls will fill the public parks laughing and playing. It is a good city to grow up in. Come on, say it's a good city to grow up in. The Lord spoke that scripture to our hearts early this year. And we feel that the Lord has, has us in pursuit that the Father's house and all its communities will always be a good city to grow up in and a good city to grow old in. Now I've got to stand up because I feel real passionate about the older generation at the Father's house. Um, in, in our culture in the United States, when people grow older, they become invisible. Almost a nuisance to society. You see, it's not scriptural that that is the part that it happens. The Bible tells us very clearly that when people grow older, they will be honored more. They become more valued to us. They are the scribes of the testimonies of God. And at the Father's house, we've been asking, having meetings and asking the question, what can we do that nobody growing older will ever wonder, am I still seen? Come on, you know that's good. So part of what we want to do, and you'll see the map behind us, is to develop some areas for our older people. We're talking about some of the pavilions and some grills and some horseshoe things and all kinds of things. And those are the external things, but it's changing the way that people feel when they're around us. So if you are older in this place and you, you say, I love this church, but it's just too loud. I want you to know that we are actively pursuing technology where certain sections where you sit will not be as intense, that you know that there is a place for you where you don't have to close your ears to worship Jesus. Come on. I know I'm making somebody happy right now. But not only do we want to invest in the older people, we also want to renovate our kids' areas in the Chile campus. Now, you Greece crowds, you go like, oh, what about us? If we can just look like you right now in Greece, we'll be so happy. But right now, after 10 years, when you drop your kids off, I know you can smell them before you arrive at them. 
And you know that it's time to replace things when you can smell kids before you arrive at them. And I did not say your kids smell. I said the carpets are not smelling so great. And we, we want to invest in our kids because, ladies and gentlemen, beyond feeling great and looking great, do you understand that this is the first generation that is coming in front of us that does not understand that Noah and Pinocchio is not the same story and they're not both in the Bible? We are losing generations of kids because they are no longer raised with Christ as the foundation of their family. That is why the Father's house, we as a church family, cannot get handed down things and second grade or second graded and teaching kids about Jesus. We've got to invest large with our lives and our resources so that our kids and their friends will never not know about Jesus. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Thirdly, I want to tell you about something that is very dear to our heart. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, he's almost done. It's almost done. At our life center, for the last seven years, we've been feeding and ministering and loving our life center community. People from Cadillac um, Hotel, if you've ever been to Cadillac Hotel, the Cadillac Hotel is one of those places where people want to be invisible because it, it is so hard to imagine how you can fix things. But thanks to your generosity, to your giving, to your tithe, to your offering, we have been able to provide hundreds and hundreds and thousand pounds of food every twice a week. We have been feeding you. All of our volunteers have been feeding and showing the hands and the feet of, feet of Jesus. I was in, in, in Mexico, in Juarez, Mexico, with my son preaching at a beautiful church. And as we left the church, we saw this truck outside the church. I want to show you a picture of this truck. I asked the question, what is that truck all about? They go like, oh, this is how we do it in Mexico, their area, because it's so, so poor. They say they have different routes that they go every weekend, and they would go into a public park, the side of the truck opens, and their kids' ministry has kids' outreach. They say, th this is why they start with that, because they say wherever there is poverty, kids hurt the most. They have emotional po poverty. They have love poverty. They have affirmation poverty. They have physical poverty. They have safety poverty. Poverty reaches them. They say so. They breathe life into the kids. Tell them about Jesus. Then they feed the kids. And then they invite the community to come get food bags. When, I, when we heard that, I took a picture of that truck. And I go like, imagine if we at the Father's house can add to our life center a fleet of hope trucks that go out to more than just one area in our community. Imagine we can become the ones where people stand on the street corners knowing the hope truck is coming. And not only are they bringing food, but they're bringing acceptance and the love of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but that thrills my heart. And I believe that's an extension of what the Lord wants to do. Not only that, we want to continue with our ministry downtown at our, at our life center. Secondly, we want to continue with partnering with international and national missions organizations. Everybody that was part of Feed My Starving Children last November, can you shout yes? yes. Over a thousand people packed 220,000 meals for people in Haiti. No, no, I didn't say 220 meals. 200 and 20,000 meals. We have partnered with, with Feed My Starving Children again this year. And we're going to push that number and see if we can add another 50 to 100,000 meals on top of that. And it's all because of your giving and faithfulness and you buying in to realize that the, the being here is not just for you, but God wants to activate you so that he can reach a world that is very broken through us. Come on, shout one more. No, come on, shout one more. One more. We, I want to share with you a beautiful dream that the Lord placed in our hearts a couple of years ago. It's called Message Makers. You know that we see right now a generation of kids that leave church younger. They become young adults and they leave church. And the moment they engage in universities and colleges and work, we see that 
there was almost a fragmentation of their faith that happens. And all of a sudden, the ones that were with us and the ones that were worshiping and the ones that were leading worship and the ones that were active in missions, all of a sudden becomes almost an enemy of the very faith that they need to carry them in life. And the Lord spoke to our hearts to find a way to develop what we call an internship, but an internship with a mission. And we are seeing that the Lord is beginning to kindle the seat. In the last service, we're going to be introducing, I believe, 17 new interns that started this summer with a father's house. But here is the dream. The dream that we see with the 16 acres that is lying on the, on the west side of our church is to build a beautiful intern school where young adults can give a year of their lives that gap year, that extra year that you don't know what to do, that year of confusion where you don't know, I don't want to do with my life, where we can not only help you get rooted in your faith and theology with Christ, but deploy you on world missions for three months, that after you complete a year and be deployed with missions, wherever you go, you do not go frail in your faith and being thrown by things. You go as the very life-giving breath of Jesus on mission to help renovate and heal the world for Christ. Can I get an amen on that? So there is a beautiful story in the book of Joshua chapter 4. You say, Pierre, why did you go from there to Joshua chapter 4? Because you see, Joshua was a leader that followed Moses. Now, I, I just between you and I, never volunteer to follow a great leader like Moses. Don't do it. Find someone who really messed up. Then you volunteer because chances are you'll most likely succeed after a leader like that. But Moses, are you kidding me? Moses is epic. Moses opened the ocean. Moses caused water to come out of a rock and manna out of the sky. Moses, God was with Moses. And here is a young leader. His name is Joshua. And God says to Joshua, be strong of good courage and do not fear. Now, just you and I, whenever God starts, or oh, be strong of good courage and do not fear. Big trouble's coming. Gigantic trouble. Gigantic challenges. You know, God knows it's coming. He's like, by the way, I, you may not see this, but you better be strong of full hope and courage and do not fear. But you know what the beautiful thing about God when he says do not fear? Because he promises his presence. He's not promising you to have mind over matter. He says, do not fear, because I've already seen the outcome of what you don't even see. The road ahead is a spectacular road. Just be filled with courage and faith and trust me and give yourself to the mission. And the very first thing when Joshua picked up the staff of Moses, he was standing in front of the Jordan River. Jordan River is such a big river, and it was in full flood. Come on, shout full flood. Now, when it's in full flood, no man, no animal, nothing can cross the Jordan River. And God says to Joshua, here is your first leadership assignment. Take all of Israel through the Jordan River. That's in full flood. Amen. <laughs> and in that moment, I love Joshua. He says, God, how do I do it? God says, bring the leaders. Come and shout, bring the leaders. <laughs> leaders in this place, those with a leadership gift. You have may have not declared yourself, but wherever you are in life, you find yourself leading. You know how you find yourself leading? Because you get so irritated if nothing happens around you. You get royally ticked if nothing happens. You're on vacation and everybody goes like, I don't know what to do. You go like, oh Lord, let me just tell you right now what we're gonna do, because I cannot stand it when we don't know where we're going. You're a leader on assignment. I want you to know in God's economy, leaders always go first. That's why I've got great news for you. Part of the Father's House leadership came on Wednesday and 124 of them came and pledged and they have pledged $331,000 to see the dreams. Yeah, it's worthy of clapping right now to see the dream in the next chapter of God come to performance. But here is the beautiful part. The Lord said to Joshua, Joshua, I want you to cross the river. When you get to the middle of the river, I want you to pick up 12 stones. 
one for each of the tribe of Israel. Now listen, God instructed this when he didn't even open the river yet. Think in Joshua's mind, what do you want us to do, like dive down? Well, God, why? But the Bible says the moment they began to walk into the water, ladies and gentlemen, they just kept walking and kept walking. The water did not part when they were standing on the side. The water parted when they put their foot in the water and pressed to their knees and to their waist and to their chest. It's the moment where you feel you're going to drown where God sees your faith. I want you to know you will never experience the adventure of a spiritual journey when you sit safely on the side and you criticize those around you. It's not until you yourself put yourself at risk that you will see the hand and the promises of God. And the thing that I fear most is that we agree but we never get up to risk it for ourselves. Without risk, there's no faith. Without faith, there is no promise. And this will just remain a fairy tale that asks for you to be a spectator. Come on, would you high five somebody and say, you're not a spectator. No, no, I want you to hurt them. Say, you're not a spectator. You are not a spectator. I cannot allow you to be a spectator. If as a pastor I allow you to be a spectator, I can write your obituary right now because people who remain spectators will silently die. I cannot let you die in front of my eyes. I've got to get you in the water. Come on, I would shout amen right about now. And the Bible says when they crossed, God opened the river and they walked on a dry bed and they put 12 stones on the embankment. And Joshua said to God, God, why did you want us to do the 12 stones? This is so beautiful. God says in the days to come, your children will look at the 12 stones as they play next to this river and say, what is up with the 12 stones? Well, it's not exactly what is up in the 12 stones. It's like... Lordeth, wyeth, thereeth, twelveth, stoneth, earth. But in our translation is, what the heck? What is up with the stones? He says, this, this. Then you will tell them this. The twelve stones is a living memorial to remind you of the mighty God that you serve. Oh, don't you love that? You see, ladies and gentlemen, I believe with all of my heart that God wants us to become memorial stones. Here is my last story. I promise. Last story. Can I? One more. Last story. I was sitting in a small little room in the church across the street. It wasn't even a room. It was a closet under the stairs, and I shared it with two old broken air conditioners. We had this dream to plant churches. We had this dream to buy 60 acres with money we did not have and build a 1100 seat auditorium. You know why? Because we believe that you're going to come. We believe that in 2017 you're going to sit where you sit and you're going to be challenged to not die in the seat but make your life epic and become a story for Christ. We, we began to believe in those things and I'm like, God, how are we going to do this? Our income is $6,000 a week and if you're working for the banking industry, you know that is dumb. You don't go 6,000 and you tackle a $12 million project. It doesn't work that way. And then I saw on TV that one of the preachers down south, somebody gave him, he was building a building and somebody gave him a million dollar offering. Somebody gave him a check for a million dollars. So I went on my knees before the Lord. I go like, God, <laughs> <sighs> Jesus, let me explain to you how the south works. In south, everybody is saved. In the south, everybody gives. In the north, it's a different story. Would you give us a million dollars? Because you are fair, right? You know how you reason with God? You, you become the jury. You become the, the advocate. You become everything you can. And, and, and then I heard this. This is what I heard a whisper, not with my ears, with my heart. You know the conversation you can hear, but there's no sound? I heard this. So you want to go from Egypt to the promised land all in one day. I go like, yup, that's exactly what I want. <laughs> so you want to go with a dream, and then it just gets paid for. No journey. I go like, yeah, that's exactly what I want. <laughs> I heard this. So you do not want to see the ocean open. You don't want to see water come out of the rock. You don't want to see manna come out of heaven. Oh, you don't want to go through Jericho. You don't want to see walls come down. I go like, yup, no, I'm good, good with that. I'm just like... <laughs> Then I heard this. 
What story will you tell your children? I know what God was saying. He says, without the journey of faith, there's no living memorial to tell that our children of God's faithfulness. Because of God's grace, nobody gave us a million. To be honest with you, the highest number of money we got was $20,000. Ordinary people can tell you stories of God's amazing grace, how they sacrificed and they gave. If my children, your children, come and sit around my campfire, I can keep them busy for a whole week, telling them a story upon story, a story upon story of God's faithfulness. And I believe in our campuses here today, another story is being written. Because statistically, the outcome of this meeting is that 60% of you will do nothing. 60% of you will sit back and go like, that was great. Thank God I can come to this church. I'm doing nothing. But you see... You're not part of statistics. I believe that in this church today, that 99% of us, there's always one. Turn to your name and say, there's always one. You know that one? You know? Thank God it's not you, but there's always one. There is always one. But 99% of you today can flip the tide and choose to be engaged. L let me explain this to you. I believe the reason why a lot of people don't give is because they feel what they've got to give is insignificant. I believe it with all my heart. I, I want to show you real quick what $10 a week can do. Not your firstborn, not your Disney vacation, $10 a week. $10 a week. When 800 people decide to give $10 a week over two years, it's $832,000. Ladies and gentlemen, it's short of a campus in Brighton. $10 a week. I, I can say this to you, when you give $20 a week, it's $2,000, but it's, it's almost $1.6 million. Do you know what that can do to the status quo of poverty and brokenness around us? And it's not asking of you the weight, it's asking you to engage and do something. But you see, I want you to look me in the eyes. This is as close as I can get to all of you. It's not what your money can do, it's what it does to you when you choose to give. It's, it's what it does to your heart, it's what it does to your hands, it's what it does to your faith. Listen, somehow if you don't give, God will find another way. You know it will happen. But all that would be is that you will forever be excluded from the living memorial of being part of the mighty works of God. And, and I want to say this is what God does in you. It's that, that $10, that $20 that you say, God, I'm just going to step into the water. I don't even believe in some of this stuff, but I'm going to choose to ignite my life and be part of the journey. I'm going to see what giving can do to my life. Because you see, ladies and gentlemen, I love the scripture that Pastor Chris read. Zinnan, if you can come help me. He says, one gives freely, yet grows all the more richer. The word richer is the word more prosperous, more blessed. He says, in other words, there's people that will choose to give, and their lives are just blessed. He says, another withholds what he should give. And yet, his need continues. I love that. And when the need continues, people go like, see, that's why I cannot give. Look, look, it's a mess. Everything breaks. Oh, it's a mess. No, no, no. Scripture says when we choose to be generous, ah, the resting of God's favor comes to our lives. And he says this, lastly, whoever brings blessing will be enriched. And one who waters himself will be watered. Whoever blesses other people. I'm going to ask that we dim down the house lights. Pastor Luke, if your worship team and the worship teams here can get ready. I want to get close to your heart as I can. This pledge card. If you're part of the fam Father's house family, if you've been coming here more than three times, if you've been drinking from the water from this well, if you come here and go like, I leave feeling better about my life, Thank God for the Father's House Church family. I want to challenge you to not be a spectator. I want to challenge you to be a kingdom builder. I want to challenge you to change the tide of statistics that says in our culture, most people to lean back and exclude themselves. We are not most of the culture. 
we are the sons, the adopted sons of daughters of the living God. We choose to give up our lives in order for God to keep filling our lives so that we can see the kingdom of heaven happening. So I'm going to ask that with both campuses that everybody just place your pledge card in your hand and I'm going to pray for us. Whether you've decided to give or not give is irrelevant because I cannot force you. I will never make you. I can only be honest and encourage. But I'm trusting that as I pray for you, and after that, Pastor Luke, I'm going to pass to you, that the Holy Spirit will nudge your heart. Holy Spirit, only you, O oh God, can cause hearts to lean in. Because if you do not work in this moment, statistics are like gravity. It pull, pulls people to its very center. I pray that there will not be a single heart in this place that is unchallenged to give something to the building of your kingdom. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak. Every heart in this place will be challenged. Challenged to become part of the living memorial of what God is doing. Thank you that you hear this prayer, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Luke, I'm going to pass to you right now. So here we sit in this place right now, and we're about to give. As your pastor, I want to encourage you to not be a spectator, even if it's a once-off gift, but to be part of this moment. The pens, first fruit offering, all in front of you. There are six different places where you can give. There's walls over here, and there is a bucket up here. Not a bucket, it's a glass vase. 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 Tables, tables, and a vase. When you go to the front and you lay down your pledge, would you do me a favor and pick up one of these river rocks? I want you to take it home. I want you to put it somewhere every time you see it. Let it be a living memorial that you are a kingdom builder. Oh, I love this. That no matter what the enemy throws at your life, you go like, I don't care what you do, I'm a kingdom builder. And God puts his hands on kingdom builders because without them, things move slower. I am a kingdom builder. And you're going to see graphics on the screen behind me. If we can get up the first graphic, guys, that will be so helpful. The first graphic you see on the side, when you see your section in, in highlighted, that means it's your turn to get up and move to any of these stations to lay down your pledge to give. Are you guys ready? You ready? Oh, I've got one believer right there. Are you ready? Yeah. You and me, man. You and me. You and me. The two of us, that's what we're going to do. The two of us, God's going to multiply it. Father, bless everyone that gives right now. In Jesus' name.